Amen. Whatever you want to do, Jesus more. That's what I want for the Lord, and that's our theme for this year. Jesus more. And so you get ready. Amen. When we pray such a prayer, understand some things gonna change in your life. Hmm? He'll change your attitude, he'll change your outlook, he'll change your mindset, he'll change the way you look at life, he'll change the way you love others. Jesus will indeed change you. Well, big mama said, I looked at my hands and huh, they looked through, I looked at my feet, and they did too. The more you draw closer to him, the more you look like him. Paul said we've been predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son. So when people see us, they'll see him in us. When people hear us, they'll hear his voice. Through us. Jesus more. If you want to know what God wants from you, He wants you to be more like Him. Right. Our job, Brother Claudia, is to cooperate with what He wants to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what He does, He'll change us. Amen. Change the old habit. What Paul said? Did not Paul say old things? What? Pass the way all things become the new way. Jesus moves on the inside, Brother Jeremy, and the, whatever's in there that's not like him got to move out. Huh? And all we got to do is cooperate by allowing the Spirit and the Word of God to have free course in our life. That's our job. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. God has made us so many promises. And right about it? John 3 16 is a promise. Mm -hmm. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son of whosoever what? Believe in him and shall what? Not perish, but have. That's a promise. If you believe in Christ with all your heart, the Bible said you're going to be him forever. He made us so many promises. He made us, gave us the opportunity to become a what? A child of God. Do you need that? Over there in the book of John chapter 1, the Bible says, as many as received him, to them he gave what? Power to become sons of God. That's a promise. Hmm? You may feel like an orphan on the earth, but in the spirit, you got a heavenly father who cares about you, and he has made you an heir with Christ. Whenever Christ on you, you can die poor. Come on, somebody. And wake up in, the, in paradise. Amen. And you want everything there. Huh? He's made us so many promises. I, I don't know if you, if you feel loved by somebody, but somebody loves you. Huh? God loves you. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, God had what? Demonstrated his love toward us while we were sinners. Look at that. When I wasn't fit to live, I wasn't fit to die. God loves me. And not in love, uh, E-D, love, L-O-V-E-S, he still loves me. That's a promise that he obeyed us. Huh? And not only that, if you find in your life that look like don't nobody care for you, that is someone who cares. There's someone who shall, what the Bible says, cast your what? Cares upon him. Why? Because he cares. He cares for you. And some folk try to throw you in hell. Okay? Uh, but he made me a promise. There, therefore now no condemnation to them who in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yeah. They can try to put you in hell, they just can't do it. The only person put you in hell is you. Mm -hmm. Hell somebody. None of that, I, I mean, I be what other folk think I should be. But he promised me, amen, that I am complete in him. Because the Bible said, you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. I may not be what folk think I ought to be, but in him, he said I'm complete. He that began a good work in you would what? Complete it. Huh? But Paul also told us in this chapter 15, we, he made us some more promises. Mm -hmm. Verse 53 said, This corruptible got to put on in corruption. This mortal must put on immortality. Huh? Somebody might take a gun and kill the body, but they cannot kill my soul. They cannot kill my spirit. 
He's going to resurrect me and give me a brand new body. That's what's in order for me. That's the promise that he made me. That's the promise that he made all of those who believe. He not only promised me a resurrection, he promised me victory. Because the text said, Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. For our Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to tell you right now, I may look like a loser, but I'm a winner. I'm a winner because I believe in the one that championed my soul. The one that died that I might live. Because I have him. Because I have him. He has me. You may be there one day if they put my body in the grave. Amen. But just realize I ain't going to be in there. I'm going to be with my Savior. Why? Because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so in light of all these promises, you owe the Lord. You owe him. All right. That's really what Verse 58 say, in light of all the things that God has done for you, you owe him. Verse 15 talks about what you owe. The Bible said, you owe him to be steadfast. That means to be seen, to be settled in your faith. That you believe that he is God and that beside him, that is no other. You owe him to be unmovable. If the whole world turn away from Christ, that you're going to stand and you, you're going to be like that tree. Pray about it. You shall not be moved. You owe the Lord. And today we're talking about another thing that you owe Sister Carlyon. Not only should you be steadfast, not only should you be unmovable, but the preacher said, you need to be abounding in the work of the Lord. And work is something that God requires. The reason I know he required, John, one of the first things that God did when he made the man was gave him huh, work to do. Hmm? In the book of Genesis, the Bible said the Lord took the man, took him, put him in the garden. And his job was to dress it, Sister Jones, and to keep it. Man had been working from the beginning. Hmm? And a lot of folk today is allergic to it. Hello, sir. Huh? They want you to work. And feed them. They want you to work and pay their bills. They'll have babies, but want you to raise them. Y'all ain't saying that. A lot of folk is allergic to what? That's a problem. The reason that's a problem because Thessalonians said, if a man won't work, neither shall he eat. Too many times we're giving too many people a pass. Not required of them what God requires of them. And sometimes we talk about lazy men, but some men were lazy because they was raised lazy. They weren't raised to get up off that couch and go to work. They were raised to play video games, and now that's all they want to do. And they look at the man and say, he's lazy, but if you didn't raise him, guess what? That's not only his problem, that's your problem. Because the Bible said, train up a child in the way that he should go. The first thing God did for Adam is put him in the garden and say, go to work. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We dress them up, tell them how cute they look, put them with bound fancy clothes and fancy shoes. All they want to do is walk around looking fancy. But look here, if you're really working, work is dirty. You get your hands dirty, y'all ain't saying nothing. You get your foot dirty when you're working, amen. The Bible says every man shall eat by the what? Sweat of his brow. Be allergic to work. And work is good. Why? Because God, everything God made is what? Good. Work is good. And a lot of folk like chasing that bag. They like working for buying for money. But for the Christian, hey amen, our first responsibility is not working for money. Money is good in its place. Our first responsibility, Sister Pugh, the Bible said in the book of Colossians, 
Whatsoever you do, do it hardly as unto the Lord. Our first responsibility to work is not simply in making money. Our first responsibility is in glorifying the Lord. Because the Bible says, whatever you do, do it to the glory of of the Lord. And so when you go to the job and you punch in your clock, amen, God don't want the first thing you think about is my paycheck. God wants the first thing you think about, Lord, I thank you for this job. I thank you for the opportunity to do what you trained me to do. I, I thank you for the opportunity to, to do what you show me that you do every day. Anybody glad that God go to work? The reason I know he go to work because I don't see no wheelchairs in here. The reason I know he go to work, amen, because you got clothes on your back. The reason I know he go to work because you got cars. I think in the parking lot. The reason I know he's going to work because the sun rises every day in the east and sets it in the west. And you know why? Because God is always on this job. And if God is on our job, on his job, we all need to be about our father's business. Abounding in the work of the Lord. Now, get out of this misconception. Because I just talked to the cows. Some folks say they're secular work. And then there's God's work. When you're a Christian, it's all God's work. Huh? Because the text said, work as a what? Unto what? The law. And so you don't, we, the Christian don't separate the secular in that regard from the spiritual. Because when you're walking in the spirit, you don't, you don't take the spirit off when you go to work with it. Some folks do. Because <laughs> some folks get on a job after straight food, be singing in the choir, put in the pulpit, but when you know God, because of the first time I get there, I'm going to talk to you. Now the book says, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Why? Because the Bible said in the internet chapter, Colossians 23, 24, he said, not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward. Your paycheck, your paycheck may be signed by a man, but it came from God. When you honor the Lord by your opinions, he's going to make sure the Bible said, in all labor that is profit. Look at 
verse number one in the very first verse in this chapter Paul declared the work of the Lord he said I declare unto you the gospel which I what preach unto you which also you have received and wherein you stand by which also ye are saved if you keep in memory what I what preach unto you unless you have believed in vain for I delivered unto you First of all, that which I also received. Y'all see the, the work of the Lord. Yeah. How the Christ, he did what? He died. Yeah. Huh? He died for our sins according, Mother Bonnie, to the scriptures. And not only did he die to the spirit, verse 4 said that he was buried. Huh? And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So if you want to know what the work of the Lord is, it's telling people who Jesus is and what he did at Calvary. Huh? That's the work of the Lord. And I must say that too many Christians are allergic to the work of the Lord. They can talk about politics. They can talk about sports. How they can talk about their neighbor. But it's hard for too many people to tell folk what Jesus did for them. I used to have that problem. But see, but when Jesus get on the inside, he'll show up on the outside. And what the Sunday school say, he'll take away your fear. Because the Bible says perfect love, it casts out fear. In other words, if you're not a shame, you ought to be to tell somebody what he did in your life. You ought to be to tell them about Jesus' first sermon. Did anybody know what he said in his first sermon? He said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said, repent ye and believe the gospel. Right there, Jesus changed the order of service. He was man of little baby. Huh? He was Joseph's son. But now he's showing that he's the son of man that come to seek and to save. That which was lost. And I need to help you walk out here. God didn't have this church built. So folk can just come in and sit down on the pew. You're supposed to come in and worship. You're supposed to come in and get taught. Then he said, go to the hedges and highway. And he said, compel me to come in. What did Jesus say do? He didn't say, go find your good pastor. Because he's going to send you the one that he wants you to have. Your pastor can't get you into heaven. Your pastor can't die for your sin. That was done at Calvary's cross when Jesus showed us that he was the boss. Now, God, don't have no bench members that just come in and see who come and see who go. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And so if you say you love the Lord, because he heard you cry, he want to see how you really love him. Can you tell your neighbor that Jesus died? Can you tell your son, your daughter, that he was buried? Can you tell your best friend that on the third day he rose again? That's the word of the Lord is declaring the gospel. What to say? What they? How can they preach? The little man 
Well, I'm a preacher. How can they preach except he's been sent? And all of us, if you're a Christian, you've been sent. What did Jesus say? Go ye, therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. He said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you to break the work of the Lord. This church does not exist to have service. Because sometimes, that's all for Papa, we had service. No, Jesus wants some folk to get saved. He wants some folk to get saved.
you don't care about his church. Because the Bible said, by the foolishness of preaching, men are saved. If you're not telling people about Jesus and what he has done in your life and what he's able to do in your, their life, you don't care about the church. You might say, Brother, how can you say that? Because the Bible says a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, if you say that you know him and love him and you're not doing what he told you to do, the Bible says you're a liar. And the truth ain't in you. So God is saying, if you win another Bartholomew, it ain't about Bartholomew, it's about the kingdom of heaven. Ain't that right? Jesus didn't say, uh, seek ye first Bartholomew. He said, seek ye first God, hello, the Lord, the kingdom of God, and his what? Righteousness. Then he said, I'll add to the church. Look in Acts chapter 2. When the Bible says that the Lord added to the church, you know why they added? Because they were loving each other, they were declaring the gospel, they were sharing with each other, they were doing what he said, do. You can't worry about the church if you ain't doing nothing to help the church. If all you do is coming, you ain't helping nobody, not even yourself. You got to be about your father's business. That's what you got to do. In 2024, that's what we got to do. God ain't impressed with folk coming to church. He not moved by attendance. He moved by you giving him your undivided attention. That's what he moved by. He's got to get out of it. He's got to get out of this coming to church. God asked him, when you going to be the church? When you going to let folk know what Jesus means to you? The scripture said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Paul said, in view of God's mercy, and we all have received mercy, he said, present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of worship. God ain't impressed with you coming here just lifting up hands. He wants you to go and extend the hand of Christ to those folk in the street, them drunks, them drug addicts, them whores. God wants them saved. And Paul said, and such were some of you. When I was out there for the kid, that was at the home mother. Hello, somebody. God said, God said, now, y'all yeah, looking at me, but I'm looking at you. And Paul said, abounding in the work of the Lord. That means do and more and more to bring people to Christ. And you done heard it said this way, Chad is going where? At your own house. If your son or daughter is not praising and worshiping, serving God, don't run out to save somebody else out. Start in your own house. That's your job. Not only your job, it's supposed to be yo. Repeat after me, Jay. Oh.
If they die and they, and they sin, their blood is on what? But if you tell them what God said and they die and they sin, what are your hands? Clean. Stop going to the funeral. Come out. I hope they made it. Now show them how to make it before they die. At least do what? Your part. But I want to tell you, sometimes the breakthrough that you're praying for is waiting on your obedience. Did you hear what I said? If you're praying for something, but you're already not doing the other stuff you told me to do, sometimes the breakthrough that you're praying for is waiting on you to obey. If you, the book says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the what? God, God wait to bless you, but you got to do his will. You want your family to turn around? Do what God told you to do to turn them around. Just praying is not enough. If you praying but sitting on your do nothing, you ain't doing nothing. You got to get up. You got to be about your father's business. That's got to be us in 2024. Enough just wanting to wait to see who comes to church. The main thing is Jesus here. If Jesus is here, he said, what, two or three? Sit up right there. Stop worrying about who leave. If they leave, they want to leave, God bless them. Gather in the circle. Keep going, keep doing God's will. That's what we got to do.
tell him what he did for you. And tell him that he wants to save them what? Them too. And again, this, this ain't nothing that you can't do. Matter of fact, this week, because of this message, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. God going to put you in a situation. Brother Kyle, the words you use this morning, God going to put you in a situation. Holy Spirit going to speak to your mind. Holy Spirit going to give you, tell you what to say to somebody. And God's going to wait to see whether or not you can see. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. If you love the Lord, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. You're going to say it. If you don't, you're going to make an excuse. That, that wasn't the Lord. That was the devil. That was whatever was my mind. And when you leave, you're going to have an empty feeling in you. You know why? Because you rejected God. You rejected God. Stop rejecting God. Just let him have it right away. You owe it to him. Why you owe it? All the promises he made in this text. Why you owe it? Because he's the one made you. You breathing his air right now. Them legs you walking on, them, them his legs. The eyes you seeing out of, he made them. That tongue you talk with, he made that. We owe him. It's time to start paying back. We'll never pay it all. But what we did in all um, them old layaway sister, let me pay on. I paid off after a while. Are you saying? Are you saying? Jesus said, I ain't come. Seeking to say that was the law. He said, Whosoever will, let them come and drink of the water of life free. You thirsty? He said, If any man eat a drink of that bread that he gives, he should never hunger and thirst. Right. 